Hey whiskey fam, welcome back, good to see ya. So, I'm going to start this off by saying, I'm probably getting ready for demonetization immediately, because I'm going to keep it pretty raw. Uh, I don't really care either way, because this is for the community, and that's really all it's for. So, let's talk about Overhit. Uh, we've learned a lot in the last 48 hours that the game has really been out, and since we've been kind of getting into it, right? So... That being said, there's a lot to talk about. So the first thing is, we want to talk about the game. And there's some things that you want to understand when you're getting into it. So the first thing is, let's talk about how the game actually is. The first most important part about any of these games that are gotchas are the units. So here's a problem. Everything we know, everything that we discussed in the last video, uh, is bullshit. And here's why. From the Asian servers, the Japanese and the Korean server, if you look at all of their units, and then you look at all of their rewards, especially the early rewards, you're going to notice that we're getting boned. Not just a little bit, not just the tip, but the whole schlong. Um, and it's frustrating, right? And so what are we losing? First of all, remember when I said last video, that in the first week, theoretically, you're supposed to get two selector tickets because that's what happened in Asia, which was amazing. It was great. It was very helpful. And it gave you the opportunity out of a five-man squad to have, at the very minimum, a three-man squad that you chose, that you had some control over, and then you can progress as you like. We don't have that no more, fellas. Why? They took it away. Uh, how do you know? Simple. If I look here, I go to events... Seven day login check. This is what I got. First day, I got 100k gold, 100 gems, some SR hero summon ticket, which should have been, in my opinion, selector. Day one really was supposed to be a selector, but even day two, I'll take it. Selector. Look at all this stuff that I don't care about. Then you have here, day seven, the big payoff, which is a SSR hero summon ticket. Now, what does that mean? This is not a selector ticket. Again, let me repeat myself. This is not a selector ticket. That is a huge difference. As we all have experienced, you pull a rando, right? And there is a more than likely chance that you're going to be disappointed. And you're not going to have the right team or the right unit even. Don't even talk about the bomb units. Talk about just a right tank, DPS, and healer. You're probably going to end up with duplicate of something else or whatever. Point is, you have zero control over your destiny or your future. That's a huge problem for me. And other major re uh, updates, actually, that we got to talk about is there are completely different stats and roles for the units that were in Asia. So to give you a perfect example, Blossom. Blossom is supposed to be a support unfortunately if we look at what she is now she is no longer a support so let's pull her up if we take a look at the guide and this is very important i hope you all use this you can find almost anything as a shortcut by going to the top right corner clicking on it and i'm going to go to the guide right so the guide is going to open up this menu right here hero guide is what you're really looking for but it has everything so let's look at the hero guide. This is a list of every single hero, and it's listed by their faction. So let's look. <clears throat> let's look for Blossom, right? And it's gonna take me a little time because I have zero idea where this chick is at. Uh, where are you, Blossom? You're making my life so difficult. So difficult. Why? Why? All right. I think she is a forest animal. <laughs> Nope, she is not a forest animal. Are you a primitive tribe? No, you are not a primitive tribe. Where are you? Blossom? No blossom. Okay. Let's keep it trucking. Still no blossom. Cool. Ah, there she is. Okay, Industria. Now, Blossom is supposed to be a support, but if we look at her skills, all right, increase attack by 40%. No problem. As a support, you're supposed to increase stats. Notice this is only for fire, not a problem. 
But what happened? What the hell is this? Deals damage equal to 118.2% of attack to three enemies. Deals damage equal to 178.6% of attack to three enemies. What the hell is this? So you're telling me you turned my support from Asia that I understood and then you turn her into an AOE damage unit. So she's no longer a support. Her stats are totally different and she's just not what I understood as before. Now in a lot of games that I've played, I've never experienced this before. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm uncultured. I don't know. Uh, I've never seen a game completely change all of the units, their roles, their unit, uh, their stats, and all these other things so drastically that it's an entirely different game. To me, the global server or the current server that we're on is completely different as a game than what I had experienced or seen in Korea or Japan. So to me, there's like basically two or three different games all called this overhit, but it, they're not the same at all. So that's the first thing we gotta understand. Now, why does that affect us so much? Well, that means that the tier lists are completely wrong. Everything needs to be reworked and start from scratch. And here's another problem. And this frustrates me actually, because it makes it very difficult for us as players to really understand and get into the game um, and make sure we understand how to take advantage of it. Great, so you tell me what their passive leadership skills are, fine. You tell me what their S1s or the first skill or secondary skills are, right? That's fine too, but why can I not see their stats? This means that you're literally blinding me or everyone else from understanding what are the right units to look for, right? Because you can have the most amazing skill sets. Right now, here's a perfect example. Let's look at Ophelia. Ophelia seems to be a very good unit because she is a tank, which is one of the most important roles in the game. First skill, increased block rate of forest or green allies by 10%. Sure, to be honest, it's a pretty shitty skill but whatever it's fine first skill transfer 50% of damage taken by three allies to the caster decrease damage taken by caster or magicians by 30% cool decrease damage taken by self by 37.2% cool excellent excellent so what this means is this skill is great for a tank why because one it draws all their damage it's basically a taunt skill which is fundamental as a tank you always want to taunt and two lasts for a good deal of time 49 seconds is pretty much a pretty while, a long time in this game uh you won't have to worry as much once you use it because it should tank enough time that you should hopefully take out a unit or something now that debuff on them so that you take less damage is also great Lastly, she has a guaranteed stun, almost 80%. That's as pretty much guaranteed as you're going to get on one enemy for 18 seconds. 18 seconds is a good amount of time for someone to be out of commission and also deals 252%. All this is great. I got one problem. What happens if her HP is trash? I have zero information on her. I have no idea what her stats are. So we have to, as a community, pull this data together to figure out whether Ophelia actually is good, right? Now, from my understanding, in Asia, she is good. You know, she's pretty decent because her skills are okay. And, you know, if she has the right stats, she can do her job. But what happens if they change her stats, which they've changed a lot of, and they become trash? So you think it's good, but you can't really know because you'd have half the information. So that's something you gotta keep in mind. That being said, all we can really do right now is come together and share that data back and forth because I can only get her stats obviously once I have her as a unit because once I have her as a hero, I can then go to her and actually look at the stat itself because look at that. I click, I go, here it is, stats, exactly what I need. Now, moving on, if everything's changed, what the hell are we supposed to reroll for? So I'm going to go giving, I'm going to go and give you my suggestions again. And this is a complete rework from understanding a theory crafting perspective from before the game came out 
and I said, okay, these are the best units. This is how we should play based on everything we know about the game at that time. Now that the, they now that it's been out for 48 hours, everything's out the window. I gotta start from fresh, and I gotta give you an updated version. All right. So again, this is theory crafting. We're still working on information, but this is what we as a community in our Discord community especially have come together and agreed upon saying, okay, this is what we all experienced thus far. Now, you get Ash, this unit right here. Originally, he was a tank. Pretty shitty tank, but a tank. He's no longer a tank. He is now straight DPS. First skill, increased tax uh, of allies by 25%. It's actually very good because notice there is no limitation on what it is. That's very important. No elemental limitation. Two. His first attack does 245% damage to one enemy. He has a... Oh, it also has a burn effect, but yeah, I'm not really going to care or talk about that as much. It's a lot of damage on one enemy. It's very good. Single unit attack. That's what I'm going to call it. He has a 211.8% attack to three enemies. That's an AoE. So, what does this matter? He has an incredibly strong single unit attack and an incredibly strong aoe attack in this game you do want to have both because you want that flexibility but i'm going to tell you right now aoe is king at this moment in pvp and content aoe is key if you're using a dps unit without aoe it's going to be very frustrating it's going to be very painful and you're probably going to kill yourself so don't do that look for units that have aoe <clears throat> Next, you get Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. Sophia is your free unit. Get her automatically. You know, they say you had to pre-register, but it was BS. Even if you log in as a guest, it just pops in your box anyway. They just gave it to everybody. Because it would be a nightmare to actually track it and all these other things. So, uh, let's look at her. She's a healer. She does a good job. She has two skills. One is heal healing and then two is resurrection i'm gonna tell you this right now you cannot chain them together it is not possible to practically speaking chain these two skills so if you need to heal you're gonna heal if you need to resurrect you're gonna resurrect if you want to resurrect someone and then heal it that is not gonna happen unless it is a far back unit like another healer or another mage because they're going to kill that unit very quickly her leadership skill is pretty good, 40% plus to allies of light. Uh, for me, this works out great because I was very fortunate to open Alex. Uh, Alex is a very good unit. He's actually one of the units I'm going to talk about later as one of the units you should probably hopefully get. So the four units that I would say right now, or five, that I would say look so look good so far to me is one is so uh, Helena which I said last time, she is still good. She is still a healer, thankfully. And she has almost exact same skills as Sophia. She has a mass healing and she has a resurrection. Uh, her healing is stronger than Sophia's. So if you're going to have one of them, you'd rather have Helena. But I'm going to suggest using both. And I'll get to that later. So Helena is still very good. Light element healer. Excellent. Two. Angelo. Angelo is a dark. You know what? Why am I going like this? I should just make your life easier. I'll pull him up if I can find it. Angelo is in Partia. Here is Angelo. Unlike his mom, who is Helena, Angelo is a straight DPS. He is a AoE specialist DPS. Attack increase to shadow or dark. Primary skill, damage equal to 184% to 4 enemies, not 3, 4. Deals additional damage equal to 3.9% of HP to 4 enemies. He deals massive damage. Deals damage equal to 166% of attack to 4 enemies. Basically, he has two very strong, very good, extremely AoE attacks. So he's going to help you clear everything very fast. And the fact that you can swap between them two means that he's one of the better units as DPS. If you get him, it's nice because you're going to clear content very, very quickly and probably be able to take less damage that way. Next, 
I have three units that I would recommend and they are all tanks. Now keep in mind that you start with a healer, free. You start with Ash, free. You have a DPS in Ash, you have a healer. Now the only thing you're missing is a tank. So the tank that I'm going to recommend still is Glek. Right, let's go look at Glek, the mercenary. There's some question as to how good he is currently, but here's the thing. I have fought against him and I have lost very, very quickly against him. He deals a lot of damage. He feels very tanky, uh, tankier than my Alex, which I have. So his skill is very strong. It is a straight 10% increase, oh sorry, decrease of damage taken. So he's reducing 10% of all your damage. That's very good, especially if you have multiple healers. His skill is extremely strong as a single target attack, and he has an AoE as well, which is vital. I consider not having an AoE to be a huge no-no thus far, based on content as well as a um, PvP arena. The only problem is he has stun, but it's only 30% success rate. So even though it's a strong attack, if it hits stun, this thing becomes broken immediately. If it doesn't, you're still taking good damage. So he's an excellent unit. I will say this to be fair, he is not as strong as he was in Asia, but he's still very strong here because everything got debuffed. They literally made everything weaker. Very few units were, are the same or as good. So that's one, Glek. Two would be Alex, and he is the Black Order, I believe. Nope. Where are you? The Abbey. Here's Alex. Why is he good? Just like Sophia, he only improves light units. But he's good because he has a buff, which is a support skill of increasing all your team's defense by 25%. 100% success rate, it's very good. I like it a lot, does very good. I will typically, if I don't have two healers, chain his buff and heals. So I will try to use them in succession so that either A, I have a buff on, or B, I am getting healed. This is why he's so good. He has an extremely strong AoE attack, right? So just like Glek, his AoE is extremely good. And that is why as a tank, he does his job. Two, he is still DPS. That is why he is good. And the last one that I have not used, but seems to be getting positive reviews is Ophelia. And again, I don't know her stats. I have not fought against her. I do not know, but there is a lot of discussion around her because she does have good skills. She is one of the only three. She's one. She's the only one out of the three that I've chosen thus far that has the taunt skill, which is very impressive. I will not lie. I hope she has the stats to back it up and that she's not too paper, but we'll see. Lastly, 100% stun, again, amazing. 100%, it's really 80, but you know, to me that's close enough. So these are the five units that I was just starting with. I would shoot for a tank, again, it's the one piece that's hardest to find and you're missing. You know, the unit that is Ash is very easy to level up because he is a main character. They give you a dupe in the game for free as part of content, so that allows you to level him up very quickly. Other things I'm going to go over now is let's talk about the game overall and the developer. Again, I'm going to straight up say, you know, they're probably going to demonetize me or like that kills my opportunity for sponsorship in any given point, but fuck it. I don't care. I just want to be honest about the game. You know, I have no stake in it. I'm a consumer just like you, you know, I'm all about playing the game. So that being said, let's talk about it developer it is obviously the one that we all know uh i actually just forgot their name what is their name sweet mary the developer is nexon sorry it just came to me nexon has a very bad reputation they have thus far lived up to that reputation because the communication is piss poor it is the worst that i've seen in quite a while unfortunate uh two because of that poor communication, they have not told us whether or not the servers are going to be merged. 
Now they've done this in the past in their other games. So what happened was, let's say you start now in Canada and Australia, let's say next month or two weeks from now, right? I'm hearing rumors that's gonna come out for global in early next month. So let's say two weeks, right? Theoretically, you're now two weeks behind if it's a merge server. You're just letting more people into the exact same server, but to, but all these people have two weeks head start or whatever the head start is against you in a game that is time gated. Why is it time gated? Because a lot of content is daily. So in order to do your dailies, that means you're literally half a month or more behind already on your dailies. So that's unfair. And there's no, unless they're giving you some type of um, special bonus to cover it for you, there's really just no benefit to you as a player. Besides that, there is a very good article recently on Reddit that I really appreciate. Um, so this article is a request to the community. You know, a lot of people are hyped. I was hyped. I still am. For all the things that I'm saying, I don't want you to misunderstand that I think it's a bad game. I'm actually enjoying the game. I think there's a lot of parts about the game that I really like. PvP is actually one of the parts I really enjoy. And I'm probably going to go more into the gameplay, less about, you know, theory and all these other things in the future video. I like the game. It is a good game. Um, am I totally invested into it? I don't know. You know, I'm still feeling it out. I'm not like some people. Uh, I take a while to kind of get in there. I'm a slow burn. So I'm still trying to figure it out and determine. I will say this. In my last gotcha, in my last mobile game, I spent over a G. I spend money. Uh, you know, I will whale it. I don't care. To me, I see it as a source of entertainment and a cost. I don't think anything else, right? But I do believe in buying accounts because I hate rerolling. <laughs> so I'll be honest about you. I don't want to reroll. This game, by the way, is reroll hell. They made it very, very difficult and frustrating. Um, thanks to Solicitor for doing all this tests about rerolling. And conclusion is it sucks. So if you want to know how, join the Discord. He'll tell you all about it and he'll share his pain with you. Um, by the way, I want to thank Azen for the freebie. While he was rerolling, he gave me a Helena account, which I am going to thoroughly enjoy because I'm going to be cancer and double heal everywhere through PvP and make people suffer. Um, lastly, how I like this game. Um, it's a good game. I'm enjoying it. I don't know if I love it yet. Uh, I hope you do, but that's all I know so far. I want to share more in the future. Hopefully this was useful. I won't want to waste too much of your time. Thanks for coming later. Uh, and hopefully you'll join the whiskey fam. Bye bye.